Welcome back to my t-shirt printers. I'm Mike. Let's create something in Affinity Designer. Okay, so today what I decided to do was just stop and take on a little bit of a self challenge. I challenge you to a duel, sir. That? And today I'm taking on a design program called Affinity Designer. So if you want to take on this challenge, what things are you going to need? Right now, Affinity Designer is free for 90 days. And if you do want to buy it, currently it's actually half price, which I think it works out to about 30 pounds. So if you're up for giving this a go, I'll leave a link in the description below. Head on over and get your free trial or get your free cheap copy. And if you're not, Pause this video, go grab a coffee, but make sure you come back. Let's jump in. Okay, so I've got my document open and I've put in my font. I have also just selected up here in this top left hand corner where it says designer persona. To make sure that's selected and not any of these other personas. It's a design persona we want because that's the vector option in Affinity Designer. So basically what I've done, I've got my font and I've converted it to outline. So you can see it says curves over here. If I've got a normal font like this, you can see it says convert over here and that's basically the text. And it's got this little A graphic. That means that it's still a font not a graphic so to convert that all you got to do is go up to layer drop all the way down to convert to curves now you can see if you just head on back to the layers you can see it says group now so that is now converted to a graphic no matter what program you're using it's always better to work with a actual graphic file rather than a font layer the possibilities are endless really so just make sure you get your spinning right before before you convert your file. Not that I've ever made a mistake. So let's just delete that. We don't need that anymore. And I'm just gonna label this layer that we've got here as our master graphic to begin with. And I'm going to duplicate that layer. So I'm just clicking and dragging it to this little icon over there and you can see it's made another layer. I'm now going to just hide that master graphic layer. So we're just dealing with that one at the moment. And I'm gonna duplicate it again because I know we're gonna need it a few times and we're probably gonna to have to do this a few more times. So I'm just gonna hide that one again. Okay, so now we just got this one layer over here and I'm gonna enable this outline. And let's just enable this graphic, graphic for now. So we don't get confused between the master graphic. Okay, so we've got our outline layer and we're going to be dealing with this so basically if we just head on up to where it says swatches now sometimes it's always stuck on gray so just make sure if you need the colors you just click on this little colors one over here and it gives us this whole spectrum of colors so let's just give this a little bit of a shadow that we can actually see so let's just select a blue color for now so blue fill select on that that's my stroke option and I'm going to select blue there so we've got a blue and a blue now I am going to switch on this graphic layer over here so we can actually see how wide that stroke is if you want to take that stroke a little bit thinner or thicker you can either type it in over here or use this funky little slider that they've included over here so let's just make it just to about there i'm happy with that now what i like to do i always like to convert my outlines so that it's easy just to change fills and i don't have to worry about changing fills and strokes all the time so the thing i always like to do when i've got lines is i like to convert those lines into just solid fill colors it just makes it easier later on when i need to change colors i don't have to worry about changing stroke color and finding all that and dealing with all that so i'm going to head over to my layers palette and where it says curves i'm going to select that curves layer then i'm going to head on up to layer i'm going to drop all the way down to where it says expand stroke click on that and if i have a look at my layers palette again you can see it's actually done two layers there if i just switch off that graphic layer what it's actually done is if i switch this one off too it's created a separate line there and a separate key line there so it's got a fill and a stroke so i want to select this layer and hold shift select that layer and go add so it just basically adds those two layers together and that's what we want so now basically what we can do we can change this fill to any color we want and not have to worry about changing that stroke. So it's just like that. That's really nice and easy for us to deal with. Let's just leave it blue. Let's move on to the inner key line. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take our graphic layer over here. I'm gonna make another duplicate layer of that. I can tell we're gonna make a lot of these duplicate layers. And let's label this, well, let's first switch that one off and label this one as my inner key line. So I'm gonna select the curves over here. Now basically what I wanna do is head on up to my swatches. I don't wanna fill, but I want a white key line. So where that key line is selected over there, I'm going to select that as a white, but I'm going to take out that fill. So I'm gonna select this one over here, or you can click this little button over there and it'll make it that there is no, no fill. So it's got that line through it. Then I'm gonna to go to my stroke and I'm going to take my stroke line down. So I'm gonna take it all the way down and I also want that stroke line to be on the inside. So I'm gonna click this little one over here. So the stroke aligns to the inside of my graphic. So that comes to the inside. I'm actually gonna make that a little bit thicker. You can make this as thick or as thin 
often as you want, depending on the effect you want. So I'm going to leave it there on about two point. Then I'm going to go back to my layers palette. I am going to make sure I've got my curve selected over here, my inner key line, head on up to layers, drop all the way down to expand stroke. And there we go. So I've expanded that stroke. That is my inner key line done. I think it's time to take a quick break and look at some cute monkey. <laughs> Those were not cute monkeys. So let's start prepping the effect layer. So I'm going to take the inner key line layer and I'm going to just duplicate that quick. Uh, we'll leave that up there. Uh, I'm just going to switch it off for now and just label this layer here effect layer. Okay, so we know what we're dealing with now. I am going to select the curves by just clicking that little one over there and I'm going to head on up here where it says divide. I'm going to click on divide and what it's actually done is separated. So it's kind of like releasing that compound path. That's what this is doing. So what I want to do, I want to select the inside of these ones. So I'm selecting the inside by holding shift. I'm just clicking on the inside graphics. So all the bits that I want to remain, I'm holding shift and I'm going to and I'm clicking and selecting all these little bits here. So I've got all those bits and I'm headed back up here and I'm going to go add. So that's going to make one graphic. All the rest of these little bits here in my layers palette, I don't need those. So I'm going to hold shift and select all of those. So from the top to the bottom and click on the little trash icon and you can see it's just gone in a little bit. So we've just got that inside graphic bit there. Let's just change this layer to a green so we can actually see what we're doing. So I select the layer, click on green and now we can actually see our effect layer. So I just want to switch on the key line so you can see we've got the, the outline, we've got the key line and we've got this inside. This is where our effect's going to actually go. So we need to make a duplicate of this effects layer. So I'm going to select that, drop it over there and just let's just label this inner shadow. Okay, so we're going to come back to that one in a second. We'll turn that off for now. Okay, so I'm going to get my pen tool, which is P, or you can head over to your tool palette and click on this little icon over here. I'm going to draw a line just outside this graphic and hold shift and draw a line just outside where the top beat me so it doesn't go, so it goes past this little area here to make sure I'm covered it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select that again quick and let's just make this a four point. Let's just make sure that we are on the right layer. So we're on the effect layer. Okay, cool. So what to do next is I'm just going to, I'm going to click this layer over here, hold down Alt and drag upwards whilst holding Shift. And I'm just going to make a nice a little distance, a little gap in between that, somewhere around there. I'm going to drop it there. Then I'm going to go Command J and just keep on pushing Command J and you can see I'm making all these lines go up, 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 up. So what is Command J? It's just duplicating that effect. We can actually get rid of that top one. We don't need that. So if we're going to be starting off on, there's quite a few of these, I think. Let's just open up a stroke here. If we start on, like, say, 4.5, I'd say, uh, what we're going to have to do is just count down on this one. So I'm going to go 4.4, 4.3, 4.2, 4.1, 3.9, select the next one, 3.8, 3.7. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm just like manually creating a blend. So you just got to be patient with this and just carry on. Yep, you just carry on there. We're just going to take another break and sit back and relax. Now that I've finished creating this gargantuan amount of lines, I'm going to go to this effect layer, click on that curve over there, scroll all the way down just before I hit the green layer. So just before it hits that green bit, I'm going to hit hold shift and click on that. You can see I've selected all my lines. Now I'm going to head over to layer, click down to expand stroke. So I want those as those little outlines. I'm also going to click on this little uh, add button over here. So all these curves over here, all of that will all just become one. So you can see it's all just become one. So that's the what I'm looking to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both my curves, well black lines and my green graphic. Select both of those and I'm going to click on this little button over here which is intersect. And that'll just give me the inside graphic. Now that we've got this as a complete graphic, all we can do is just select that and we can change the color. Although this is a pretty cool color combination as it is, I'm just going to claim change that to black making sure they've got a full stroke selected there. The next thing we can do is just head on up to this inner shadow bit. I'm just going to make another duplicate copy of that because what we want to do is we want to okay, create another inner key line on this, on this layer. So just switch that up and I'm going to head up here where it's that red at the moment and I'm going to make that black. 
and make sure that our fill isn't filled there. So I'm gonna to head to our stroke, make sure it comes to the inside of our stroke, and let's just expand that line ever so slightly within there. Okay, that's cool. And then because it's got this green fill over here, I'm going to take it out. Although it's showing no fill up here, and it has got a fill in there, I think that's a little bit of a glitch. I'm just gonna click on that, and you can see it's taken that away. So we've got our inner key line, sort of outer key line, then outer, outer key line, the master key line. So we're starting to create that cool effect. Let's start creating that inner shadow. So with our little inner shadow layer selected over here, let's just turn that back on. Let's just expand that down so we can actually select it. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. So I'm gonna hold down spacebar and the command key and click and drag it in so we can just get a bit of a zoom going on there. So with this layer just highlighted over here, I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm gonna click and drag a little bit off to the side. So you can see what I've done, I just click, click and drag it off to the side over there to create that little bit of a gap and I'm gonna drop it there. So now we've got two layers going on over here. This top layer, I'm going to just mark that as a black for now. And we, what we're gonna do is head over to the layers palette, hold down shift and make sure both of those layers are selected. Go up here and click on subtract. So all we're left with is this little line going around over here. Okay, now let's make that black and make sure it sits under our inner key line. So it just tucks underneath that white bit there. So now we've got this inner shadow going along our graphic. Let's get going on this outer shadow. So the outer shadow is gonna be our outline version over here. So what I wanna do is make sure I've just clicked and selected this curves layer over here. Hold down Alt like we did for the inner shadow and just click and drag that out somewhere. You can hold Shift so you can get a nice snap if you want to, a nice 45 degree angle and I'm just gonna drop it, let's drop it about there, okay. So with both those layers selected, I'm gonna head on up here where it's got this funny little icon that says add, I'm gonna click on that one and it adds them together. Now, what I wanna do, I'm gonna change that to black, okay, so I'm gonna make sure there's no outline in my strokes and click on this layer and make sure it's black. Then I'm gonna to head to my master graphic, let's just make that blue the color that we're using, take our master graphic and drag it over here and then we're gonna switch it on so we can obviously see it. That is looking so awesome. Now to just go and tweak those little bits what we did in Illustrator, these little edges over here so you can see there's like that hard edge there. If you don't want that and you want a nice shadow blend, let's select this little node tool over here. So I'm gonna select that node tool and I'm gonna actually click on that little node there and just click on backspace or delete and you can see it's just created that solid line. So wherever you kind of see there's that little funny square shape, just go there, backspace there backspace so just go up and down your letters and so you can actually see where they are there's another one over here go up and down so that's all good all good uh, let's just let's take these ones out of here okay i'm just gonna take those completely out there there's one over there here scroll on up here there's one over here so just take that out i think there's actually two over there uh this bit here let's just take out this little one here, take that out, take that out, make a nice little edge there. Take those two out of there, scroll up a bit, that's all good. Down here, there's another two, one there, one here. Uh, scroll on this way, all good. Over here, let's take out that one, and let's just sort out this little area out of here, that's all good. And just make that a little bit more straighter, click there and likewise for that one there. So that didn't take too long in actual fact. And let's zoom out and have a look at that. So that just looks awesome. So what you could do now is if you wanted to change this effects layer to a different color, so say we wanted it like a, a darker blue to create that cool like gradient effect, we could do that by just selecting this fill layer and selecting like this darker blue over here and you can see how cool does that look. That looks really cool. If you wanted this just to be that one color option again, of course, we could just change this to a white and we could take that effects layer and we could change that to a black. So it's now just that one color version like that and that just looks really cool as well. It's got that dimension to it. You could print that and it would just look awesome. Okay, so that is the first crash course in Affinity Designer. It's a great alternative to Adobe Illustrator. Yes, it doesn't have all the features that Illustrator does, but for the price, I mean, Wow. If you do want to follow along with this, I'll leave a link below so you can download all those uh, lines that I had to create and also the font files so you can see how close you can make yours look. And that about brings it to the end of another fine episode of Hanging Out With You. Don't forget to head on over to our social channels and the new Facebook group. Keep on creating and smash that like button, subscribe, and I shall see you on the next one.
Amar. 